Okay, so the other day we had ourselves the news that the Carolina Hurricanes ended up signing Tony D'Angelo to a contract. This was a pretty big deal because earlier in the month we had other news that said that the Flyers would be trading D'Angelo to Carolina with salary retained. That ended up not happening because there was some thing going on with the salary retained. It was something about the ramifications of the Flyers not being able to retain salary on a D'Angelo trade to Carolina because the Flyers got D'Angelo from Carolina a year ago. There needed to be some leeway there. But in that leeway grace period segment of time, the Carolina Hurricanes set their sights on another right-handed defenseman that was prime and offensively capable, Eric Carlson. That ship ended up not sailing, and as a result, you had yourselves the Tony D'Angelo trade to Carolina stalled, wherein you ultimately saw the Flyers buy D'Angelo out. He became a free agent, he signed with Carolina, just regularly, it's $1.6 million a year, something like that. And now, Tony D'Angelo is once again a member of the Canes. We already talked about this in the video wherein we discussed him actually signing, but he was very productive with Carolina last year in 21-22, 51 points, 64 games played. This previous season with Philadelphia, he had 42 points in 70 games played. So we know how good D'Angelo is as a right-handed offensive quarterback. It's just going to be interesting now seeing Brent Burns also on that Carolina blue line and whether or not Tony D'Angelo or Burns will get the short end of the stick when it comes to power play time. But today's video is going over a different part of the D'Angelo story. We're going over on a Josh Wegman's most recent piece on thescore.com. It talks about Tony D'Angelo and the interview that he had had with the Carolina Hurricanes media after signing with the team. Now, I'll leave two links in the description below. First is to the video itself, where D'Angelo is answering questions on Zoom from the reporters, and I'll also leave a link to this article on the score wherein we talk about the D'Angelo comments. Essentially, the reason we're bringing this up is because Tony D'Angelo in this interview speaks out on his relationship with John Tortorella, the Philadelphia Flyers head coach. The title of the article goes out there and pretty much establishes what happened. D'Angelo divulges split from the Flyers. The coach and I wound up not fitting together. The article opens up by talking about how D'Angelo explained the reason for his dismissal from the Flyers and his rift with head coach John Tortorella. Obviously, the coach and I wound up not fitting together. I guess that would be the main reason for me leaving the team and being a free agent again. And you know what? I'm gonna go out there and say it. Um, why am I not really surprised? We know John Tortorella is a very... Is hot-headed the right word to use? Okay, we'll say he's a very big and bold personality. That's probably the best way to put it. John Tortorella has his fans, and he definitely has his entertainment value when it comes to the game he provides. Plus, he's a pretty good coach. Stanley Cup winner. He can't really go out there and discredit his resume there. But when it comes to Tortorella and his style, the way he vibes with his players, the type of environment that he brings as a coach, you could understand with a guy like Tony D'Angelo, who has been in a lot of hot-headed confrontations with his teammates in the past, how that might have clashed. Now, there aren't any specific details that are talked about here, but there are a little bit more comments made by D'Angelo about the split. But essentially, when I hear that John Tortorella and Tony D'Angelo might not have gotten along on that Philadelphia Flyers bench, I kind of say, okay, well, I'm not really surprised. Like, these two guys have such strong personalities that hearing that they might not have been on the same page for a bunch of stuff and it leading to maybe not really the best situation there, yeah, it doesn't really surprise me. In fact, this article goes out there and talks about the other reason why Tony D'Angelo got bought out before the fight with Alexander Georgiev, which led to him getting bought out the first time, and now he was not on the same page with Tortorello, which led to him getting bought out the second time. As we had said, the only player in NHL history to have been bought out by two separate teams at separate times in their careers... And now, if you take a look at Tony D'Angelo, I mean, he says himself that he feels his checkered past is behind him. I've been bought out again, which is disappointing. But there were different factors that led to that a little bit. As far as controversy, I feel like that's all in the past. I guess there was some controversy this year, you could call it, just not being on the same page as the head coach. But there was no personal feelings. Nothing personal happened or something big happened to lead to anything. It was kind of just a mutual disagreement on a bunch of things that I won't get into. And you know, that's a pretty mature way of going about it, just being able to rationally say, yeah, we just didn't really agree on many things, we were on different pages. 
But the fact that he has to point it out, yeah, there were no personal feelings, nothing big happened. That's... You know what? I'll go out there and say it. At the very least, it's gross, right? Because at least he's acknowledging that in the past there was other things, that there was a big moment, a fight with Georgiev, whatever, that led to the first buyout. Now this time, it's like, nah, he just didn't really fit. There also are some other comments when it comes to D'Angelo going over to Carolina and who he's going to play with. There is a conversation in this piece discussing whether or not he's going to play with Slavin or whoever else. There is Brett Pesci, a conversation there. You also have yourselves Dmitry Orlov, so who really knows? D'Angelo also credits his strong relationship with Carolina's head coach, Rod Brindamore, as a reason for joining the team. The way I got along with Rod is more than I got along with any other coach I've played for in my career. But that's just the kind of guy he is, and I feel like we were just a good match for each other. So I'm just looking forward to getting back in that situation. And so at the very least, I mean, this was one of the things that I saw a lot of Hurricanes fans bringing up as well. Oh, why would we get D'Angelo back? He's got these problems, attitude, personality issues, whatever, whatever. But one of the more prevailing thoughts that I saw pop up on Reddit and Twitter amongst Hurricanes fans was, hey... At the very least, when it comes to D'Angelo being a hurricane, you didn't really see too many of those problems come up. You didn't see too many altercations with teammates, you didn't get the sense that there was anything going on there. It just really seemed like Rod Brindamore had D'Angelo, for lack of a better term, under control, quote-unquote. And I did see a few Hurricanes fans saying, yeah, that seems to be the case here. So... We can take this, and we can absorb the player, we can have him a part of our environment because there doesn't seem to be many of those same issues. And D'Angelo himself pretty much went out there and confirmed that. So I think disregarding the guy's personal whatever, his altercations, the fact that he called a teammate a racial slur back in the day, disregarding all that stuff, it's very apparent that with the Carolina Hurricanes, this is one of the few environments in the NHL where D'Angelo is under control. And I get it, you might disagree with the idea of getting somebody who had said some very bad things in the past, he called his teammates this, he fought with his goalie, stuff like that. You don't want to see players with that type of personality on your team, and at the same time, players like that who happen to be very talented, they're going to get NHL jobs anyway. So, for the Carolina Hurricanes, at the very least, if you can acknowledge that this is one of the few environments that's actually able to control the guy, I think it becomes a little bit easier to stomach the idea of getting him. But that's just my opinion. Of course, you're free to disagree. Let me know in the comments section below. At the end of the day, though, Rod Brindamore is just doing his job. He's talking to the guy. He's coaching the guy. He is giving him the proper mindset, most likely, to go out there and play his game. And it's very apparent from these comments that John Tortorella just could not do that. So, Philadelphia Flyers fans, what are your thoughts on Tony D'Angelo speaking out against your head coach, pretty much confirming what a lot of y'all were sort of thinking, hey, what is going on here? Like, how are these personalities going to clash? Because they're both very strong. What are your thoughts on D'Angelo saying that him and Tortorella might not have been on the same page for a chunk of the season? What are your thoughts on Rod Brindamore and how D'Angelo says that Brindamore is good because of his coaching style and how D'Angelo feels when he's being told what to do by Brindamore? If you're a Carolina Hurricanes fan, how do you feel about this situation upon learning these comments? Does this change your perception on the D'Angelo signing? Does it become a little bit easier to stomach? Do you not really care? Are you still feeling however it is you felt before. If you were against it then, are you still against it now? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about D'Angelo heading over to Carolina and the comments he had made? At the end of the day, though, this is a talented player and he is a point-scoring defenseman. So he's a good player for the numbers point of view. It's just everything else around that. We'll see how exactly that manifests in 2023-2024, his second time around in Carolina. So thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishash Rolls 99. And bye.